In this video, we will be using Maya's quick rig to rig up a character. The first thing I'm going to do is drag a character from the content browser just to see how tall my character actually is. I will scale my character relative to this character from the uh, content browser uh, to get a general sense of the size that I want the character to be. And once I've done that, I'm going to freeze the transforms on the character so that the scale X, Y, and Z are set back to 1. Now that I no longer need the character from Content Browser, I'm going to delete that. Under my Rigging menu set, I am going to go to Skeleton Quick Rig. Clicking on the plus icon will create a new character. Notice that it named my character Quick Rig Character. This is too lengthy of a name. So I'm going to rename my character by clicking on the icon next to the plus symbol, and I'll rename it to QR for Quick Rig. And rather than using the one-click solution, we're going to do the step-by-step. -step. The first step is geometry. We have to assign our mesh as the geometry. With the mesh selected, I click on the plus, and I'm done with step one. Moving on to step two, I'm simply going to click the Create Update button, and now I'm done with step two. Step three is the user adjustment of guides. The adjustment of these guides is what's going to later on build our skeleton. I will first start with the hip. Remember to look at both the front and side viewports when positioning uh, the hip, as well as the spine and the legs. I will then move on to the legs. I actually only need to position one of them, so I will position the right leg. Selecting the knee, I'll go to the side viewport where I can get a better idea of where I want it to be located. I'll also select the ankle and position that. And the ball of the foot. Looking at the leg joints from the front, I might make a few minor adjustments just to straighten them up and make sure that they're centered in the leg. And I'll move on to the three spine joints. Looking at them from the side view, they look pretty well centered and well positioned, so I will move on to the neck. I'll place this guide at the base of the neck, and I'll place the head bone right about here. In my front viewport, I will position the right arm. Right about here will be good. I will select the bone that will be located at the elbow and position it in the top viewport. And I will also make sure that the wrist is centered. I'll make a few minor adjustments to the placement, always thinking about where these bones will actually need to bend from.
The bone located at my mouse is the shoulder, which looks well positioned. Think of it as your character's clavicle. And with my adjustment guides well positioned, I'm going to click on this third icon, which will select all of my guides. And then I will click on the first icon here, which will mirror the placement of the guides on the right side to the left side. And on to step four, skeleton and rig generation. I will simply click on the create update button. And then moving on to step five, skinning. Clicking on create update will finish step five. My rig is now complete. I'll test the controls and see how well my mesh is bound see how well the mesh deforms. Moving this control, uh, both rotate and translate, we'll move the hips around. Uh, this circle at the uh, ankle of the foot will move the leg using inverse kinematics or IK. The spine joints can be rotated. And there is also this control which will rotate all the spine joints at once. This control can also be translated. Testing the clavicle, it's looking pretty good. and the shoulder. I'm also happy with this deformation. On to the elbow, which is looking good. But the hand is a bit problematic. We'll need to do some skin weights on that. Looking at the neck, it looks like it's deforming quite nicely, as well as this control, which rotates both the neck and head at the same time. But if I select the actual bone for the head, the deformation is really not working all that well. To fix these problems, I will have my mesh selected and will go to Skin, Paint, Skin, Weights, and I will open up the options for it, its tool settings. If I select the head bone, I'll see that the vertices in the head are not weighted strongly enough to that bone. Currently, both the neck and the spine is having too much influence on the vertices in the head. So what I'm going to do is select Replace as my paint operation. I will use this hard-edged brush and I will set the value to 1. Now when I paint with the head bone selected, when I paint on these vertices, I can assign them 100% to the head bone. When doing the skin weights, the warmer the color, the more influence that bone is having on those vertices on the mesh. So, in this case, white is actually 100%, red is a very strong influence, and as you go towards the cooler colors, like the blues and the greens, it has a much less of effect on those vertices. And because I still want to have a smooth transition, I'm going to select the smooth uh, paint operation, and I'll just smooth out that area a little bit to get some better deformation.
And now I'll test the area out. And I think the deformation is working much better now. Another area that was problematic when I tested this out was the hand. I'm going to go to the left hand and take a look and see what the problem is here. So if I select the hand, if I select the arm, rather, and the lower arm, and then the hand, I can see that the hand currently is weighted about 50% to the lower arm, 50% to the hand. And this is why I'm getting that strange deformation issue. Once again, I'm going to use the replace function, and I'm going to paint the vertices on the hand so that they are affected by the bone hand. Now I'll test it out. It's looking much better, although it's still a little rough around the wrist area. I'll return to my Paint Skin Weights tool and see if I can smooth out that area a little bit. And if I test it out, eh, it's still a bit problematic. I'm not sure what's happening here. Let's return to the Paint Skin Weights tool and see if we can find out what the problem is. I'm actually going to just uh, select a bunch of these different joints in the skeleton and see if I'm getting something influencing the hand that I don't want. Here's a strange area right here. I'm going to use my replace paint operation again, but this time I'm going to set the value to zero. That is going to allow me to paint away weights rather than adding weights to, the, to a bone. I think I probably introduced this problem to the hand area when I used the smooth tool earlier. Unfortunately, sometimes the weights will get distributed to uh, joints that you really don't want them to be assigned to. But I'll just quickly clean that area up using the replace tool with a value set to zero. And if I test out the uh, wrist area, it's looking much better now. Now that I've fixed the left side of my character, I'm going to mirror the weights over by going to Skin, Mirror Skin Weights. I will mirror it on the Y, Z. And I will make sure that the direction is checked for positive to negative. This will mirror the left, the character's left side to the character's right side. And if I check the hand, 
on the character's right side, it seems to be deforming nicely. And now I'll just run through some of the controls of the rig and just test it out, taking a look at the bind. I think it's looking pretty good. I think this character is ready to be posed and animated. Thank you for watching.